lucky. I always hear these stories about daughters are so tough, but my daughter was never. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, honestly, I haven't seen that Storks movie, but I saw the preview, and the baby gets dropped at the wrong house or something. I, I think that I was just lucky. The stork brought her to my house, and she never even had terrible twos. She didn't have anything. She just has always been this great kid, and she never dressed provocatively, or, I mean, she's probably more conservative than I am, and she, um, she's just a great, she's great. She's a good girl, she's sweet, she's attentive. Um, if she ever spends a night at our house, she'll come massage my husband's my hands when we're laying in bed reading her books, like, tucking us in, you know, like, I mean, she's just so cute, and, um, I just feel incredibly blessed about her. I will say a couple things. One, I try to have very little judgment about things. With all my kids, but just let them tell me and not try to have too big of a an opinion. And I don't pick at her, and I don't pick at my kids. I don't, you know, I never picked at them. And I try to find, even now as grown-ups, I mean, it's worse now that they're grown-ups, I try to be very diplomatic about advice or whatever, but um, I just try to find what they're doing, the good in what they're doing. And I, I mean, and I, I hate nagging. That's why when I ask somebody to do something like my boys, it, it, can you just do it now so I don't have to nag you because I hate nagging. But um, I think mainly I'm just, I was very lucky because she was very sweet. And also, I think I've said this before, but my grandma was from the South and you didn't talk back and, you know, and so when my kids ever talk back or did anything, I, the hair on the back of my neck would stand up and I, I just have to nip it in the bud. And so I never allowed them to be sassy with me or talk back to me or be nasty with each other or say hateful things with each other and that has really paid off and I didn't I mean the boys I wouldn't let them rough house I you know I just nip it in the bud and if they came to the table in a bad mood it'd be like why don't you go back to your room and come back be, and come back in a better mood because you belong to a family this isn't just about you so um I don't know what to say about it but she's my love I love her so much <laughs> Lipstick or chapstick, number one, I swear. Somebody once asked me, what would be an odd thing or what would be in your purse that people wouldn't think about you? And I would say, oh, probably 10 lipsticks. I, I don't know, I'm a crazy person about it. Half and half, MAC is my favorite. I have like three tubes in my purse at all times. Chapstick, I don't know, I feel thirsty if I don't have um, some kind of lip product. What else can't I live without? Probably my, my, oh, my slippers my fluffy slippers. I put them on at the end of the day. I swear, I just like, <sighs> got out my slippers. What else? Well, obviously my eye bobs, because I can't see anything without them. Well, strength probably is my positive attitude. And my weakness is probably that I believe everybody. <laughs> When my kids were when my kids were young, I swear they would tell me things. I'd be like, "Oh, okay," and my husband would be like, "Do you know that he ha ha blah, blah blah whatever?" I was like, "Oh, well, he told me." Hmm. So it was always good that he was around. So I always joked that I believed everything and he believed nothing. So somewhere in the middle was probably what really happened. Um, well, casa, big time casa, um, and you guys should all get involved because she would change your life seriously plain and simple and change the life of somebody else big time and uh, now one world stage um, uh, to bring in arts to underprivileged kids fabulous thing I would say that she sees the good in people we have that in common <laughs> um, I like that she sees the good in people and she'll fight for her family uh, to the very end and I love that actually on days is the family component and the Brady's and the um, that everybody's so close I love that um, well I always say um, Emily and Gideon because we got to wear costumes and we got to go on um, um, uh, location and that was also fun I don't do any of that anymore but um, I like that stuff a lot, but I I like some of the stuff that we've done now. I love the um, the the um, cleaning cabinet. I love the cleaning cabinet or closet scenes that we had, and we've had some scenes um, that haven't aired yet. 
that have been were just beautiful. And I love those. I love when we can just slow it down and pay attention to each other and just talk about our feelings instead of all the chaos. So those are usually my favorite scenes where he and I connect and, um, and really listen to what the other person's saying. Well, it was a long time ago and I don't really remember, but I have seen the scene. I can tell you, they were real eggs, but they were not, it was not real beer. We don't drink real alcohol here. I have heard that other shows in the 80s or 70s or something did. They'd have like two martini lunches or something, but we don't. We don't drink here. I don't think I could. I, I don't know what happened. Whatever. And I will say, um, not, not per se, but if you get off track, which happens sometimes, but you can circle back quickly and they can still follow you, you might get away with it. But there's a couple problems. One, they edit by what you say. So, because we have three, four cameras at a time, so they're kind of following what you're saying to see when you stop talking to go to the other person. So that, you have to have that. So usually if you're gonna change something, you have to, um, you know, call ahead and make the changes and they print them out and everybody has them, including the director, especially the director. Um, but uh, when you're flying and you're doing the scene, if you get off a little bit and they can still follow you, they'll keep it. Um, the big fear about um, ad-libbing or not knowing, I, I could never not know it, it would freak me out, I would just be so stressed out, is that um, they, uh, they could ask you to say it as written, and if you don't know it, it's very stressful with 20 people standing around waiting for you to, and I swear, when they're all looking at me, I can't memorize like that, it makes me so nervous. So it's just better to know your stuff, be prepared. Um, if you're not, I, I just can't imagine you'd last very long. over it and 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 I get to work and I go over it and over it and over it with people here and just run it run it run it right up until the second I'm shooting it that's how you do it and then if they say they took it two seconds if I throw it away I couldn't come back and do it that's how long I'm holding on to it <laughs> You know, generally we not so much. I mean, uh, in fact, uh, a while back, um, a bunch of us girls met and went um, on a hike, and we all were like, "Why don't we ever do this? This is so much fun because we all love each other." So, you know, I think we're just all so busy in our real life, and since we spend so much time memorizing when we're working and don't get anything done when we have a break, we try to get everything done. Um, when Stephen wasn't on the show, um, we'd meet for lunch and we'd get together, but. Um, now that I see him all the time, that's enough. Sing, and I'll tell you something. Yes, 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 and yes. Except for I have, I've completely toned up. I uh, honestly, I always think I'm. I whistle all the time, and um, Stephen and my husband will say, you know, like I'm so off key or whatever, and like I don't even hear that. I'm, I'm just whistling the tune, so I think I got it, you know. Um, key, key, what's that? Um, but what was really fun about that Love Lines movie was they played the other person singing it super loud. So I had the microphone. I mean, it was like when my sister and I used to be on the hearth of our fireplace, uh, you know, because she, I remember when she bought the Partridge Family um, album and she bought it with her own money. So she got to be all the lead singing and I was all back up. <laughs> so that's so funny. Um, but yeah, I wish I could sing, but I can't. say maybe Javier Bardem in Eat, Pray, Love. Mm, so cute. I have to tell you, I had a mad crush on Donny Osmond when I was a little kid, like when I was in fourth grade. And um, when I was on General Hospital, I went on their talk show and I completely broke out in hives. I was so nervous to finally meet my fourth grade um, crush. say I still haven't realized it I don't even know what that means really for me it made it means I'm still working in my 50s at the job that I love getting to act and uh, you know a few times a week I mean the luckiest I love it it's incredible so if that's made it I've made it and 
I often think um, a labor delivery nurse because it's kind of like um, a mama for people. And I loved mine and they meant the world to me. And I think that's what I would do. And I have to tell you, um, I mean, I'm not saying this just because I'm saying this, but Stephen, I, you know, especially thanks to the Patch and Kayla uh, Instagram that I watch these old clips all the time. I mean, all the crazy bravado and covering and cool dude and sensitive and his swagger, everything that he has put into Patch, I, I think it's pretty great. Um, you know what, I have to say, I, I, I almost think that they have all been great. I can't think of a, a decade that wasn't great. I, I, like I said a billion times, I don't have hardly any foresight and, and, and less hindsight. So I think I don't dwell on the past or things that have happened. And I, um, and I look forward to the future. And I am now I'm in my 50s. And these are amazing. Um, 20s were super fun. 30s were great. I mean, honestly, I, I think you just have to keep on trucking and keep on trying to push yourself to do great things and, and um, keep, keep trying. Keep getting back in the mix and trying, you know? And um, my mother-in-law says that the 80s are the best, so I think it just gets better and better. But you, as I joke, no one finds you at home. You have to put yourself out there. You have to, you know, jump in, grab everything you can, get involved in everything you can, and try to stop and smell the roses and appreciate your life. Appreciate your life. I think for all of us who have little kids and you're doing anything for even yourself or if you have a job and trying to do that well I mean you kind of start feeling like you're just pulled in so many directions are you doing anything well and that whole time in my life and I think for anybody I, I, I honestly I remember when my son turned 10 and I felt like I had just sort of woken up like it was such a daze especially when your kids are little it's almost like you have to sit in a chair and let them crawl all over you but um, I, I don't know. I think that I was always kind of just scrambling, you know, to keep my head above the water like everybody else. But um, I, I tell this story to my daughter a lot, and I did think this, that when my life was crazy at work or wherever, and I would come home to my little family, my little babies, and my husband, and I would think, oh, no, this is really my life. All that madness and all that stuff, that's not really my life. My life is the people who love me and that I love them and... And um, that has really helped me, and um, I think that's I helped my daughter when I tell her that story and different people. I, I mean, what's really important, and to me, that's the most important. So when I bring it back to the simpler things and realize that all these extraneous things aren't really the important things in my life, I mean, I could strip it all down and we all just go be on a little island together or something, you know, and I'd be happy. So we all get caught up in all this other stuff, but I think that to me is the most important. I would tell you probably not a medical show. <laughs> medical jargon, I have to concentrate so hard here at Days to do the medical stuff. It is hard. And um, I'd like to do a comedy. I think I'd love to do it. That's what I should have. I mean, I think I love every I Love Lucy I've ever seen. I think comedy would have been fun. Um, maybe, maybe it's in the future. Maybe when I'm Where's the Beef Grandma. Um, maybe that'll be the era of my comedy time. Probably caution, she talks a lot. <laughs> Especially after some coffee in the morning. Um, this one was, how do we handle, my husband and I handle the hot love scenes <laughs> from TV. And you know, I don't talk about it. I don't talk about it and he doesn't watch it. And I'd say that's how, I mean, the couple times he's caught it, he's just not threatened by it, so. At least he doesn't tell me he is. Well, you know, if you live in Southern California, rain is like, oh my God, it's so fabulous. I want to light a fire. I want to get all my big sweaters and uh, take a nap on the couch and, you know, drink some hot tea. It's just such a rare thing out here. I 
would say that we just, I mean, we could almost finish each other's sentences. We know each other so well and um, um, I think that's it. Maybe now it's great because he, I, he has these grandkids so he gets to show me those pictures all the time and that's super fun. And, um, and I think it's like any long-term friend. It's, um, it's really special and I think we're both really lucky. It's lucky because, you know, we were sort of assigned each other in the beginning of time, so we're lucky, <laughs> we're lucky it worked out. <laughs> okay, um, here's my question. Did you ever think in the 80s that you would still be with Kayla? Otherwise known as me, um, 30 years later. Otherwise known as you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, actually. No. I didn't. I could have answered that question yeah, for you. Hearing me, because I I, when I left there, after five years, I didn't think I'd ever be back. No, they're both and, gone. But I'm really happy that we're together after all these years and we have all this history together. I think it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about um, when the flashback 7,000 shows back? You know, here. Yeah. The flashback seven thousand shows. What do you think about that? I think uh, I, I think it's very sweet. I love to see those old scenes of the two of us together. Mm -hmm. I think we uh, we've always connected, and it's great to see how we connected, even in the beginning when we were just new. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate that whispery voice stuff. I had. Your whispery voice. Steve. That's why I called you sweetness. Oh, I wondered. Mm -hmm. <laughs>